Hi guys and welcome back to the blog. So this is a video that's a replica of one of the other videos I've done which is how Asperger's affected my first year in my degree and now that I'm in my third year I can talk about how it affected my second year in my degree. This is going to be a bit more of an interesting video than the first year because the second year really was a big change, a big adaption to the learning environment and a certain bug going around that didn't help matters. I suppose let's begin. Aspies tend to struggle in a couple of main areas and one of them is scheduling. We really like our lives scheduled to the minute and I find that I'm a lot more productive if I have my life scheduled to the minute. I don't like it when plans change. I mean, I can cope with it, but it's still it's like a little, it's just grinding away at my brain. We struggle with socialization and um, we struggle with the unknown. So these three main things really did come into play in second year. So at the end of first year, I developed a quite close knit group of people that I thought were going to be the group I would hang out with for the rest of my degree. And when I got into second year, that became very apparent that that wouldn't be the case. And what my brain had failed to compute is that you were only getting really friendly with these people because you were sat with them every single day, revising with them. So of course you'd become close to them and that took me a while to figure it out and why everything had changed in the second year. So. That was kind of apparent from the first day onwards. So my brain was then having to sort of readjust all the circles and all my social circles in my brain and who I thought I could go to with certain things. And at one point, my circle of friends felt very, 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 very small. And I started to get really bad self-esteem issues and started to feel really down about it. So it was a really tough period, but I'm glad I've sort of figured it out now. And I do have a group of people who we sort of fell together really because I had a car and I could drive people to placement but they are kind of people I don't think I could have got through my degree about now so my car share people are great. Um, I also have a couple of friends who I have interacted with through social media and I find that I'm a lot closer to them than I am to some of the people who I'm with but that's quite nice because it gives me a break from being in such an intense environment. Another way that I managed to sort of segregate my brain was to look at social media and how I used each of my platforms. So I have a private account, which I only link with people who I know on there and I have my blog account. I unfollowed every single person I knew in real life a couple of my blog account which meant I didn't have to spend every Friday and Saturday night going through people's stories and seeing them all down the pub or interacting because then that made me feel really <laughs> um, so yeah socially it's been hard and particularly with clinical partners so in Warwick we pick someone to essentially be a buddy with throughout the year and in the first week we got asked to pick them and by the end of that week, despite me asking nearly everyone, despite me messaging nearly everyone, I didn't have a clinical partner. It almost felt like being the last picked for a sports team. I remember I got really upset with myself. I thought, what is it? What have I done? Have I upset people? What, what have I said? And I was getting really, really tense about it because suddenly what I thought was going okay, I now didn't have the social groups I wanted and I I thought that everyone thought I was horrible. <laughs> um, so that was a really hard week and I did end up getting put with someone but I didn't know who they were. So I was having to not only adjust my social circles but try and prepare myself to get to know someone who I didn't know on a one-to-one -one basis every day. And my brain was just not handling it very well. But luckily, my clinical partner is amazing. We get on really well. They've got experience already in hospitals, so they know how the systems work. They're very much outgoing with staff, and that helps me a little bit because I tend to be a bit more reserved with staff members. But I really love talking to patients as well, so we, we balance each other out. We balance each other out really nicely that way. We're on the same wavelength, so I think, although it was a really stressful first week, not having to pick my own clinical partner and ending up with that person was a blessing in disguise. So 
Thank you to my clinical partner. Uh, I've told you all this before, so if you find this video, it won't really matter too much. So, that's socialization over. And now we have timetables. So structure and knowing what I'm doing from one minute to the next are really important to me. And I don't do very well when I don't have anything to work for as evidenced by every single summer holiday I've had in between universities and university years. The thing with second year is that you start on a timetable, so you start exactly the same as you are used to, but then you know that there's a massive change coming in January and that your timetable is literally going to be, here is a hospital, go and learn, which is great when you know how a hospital works and you're not nervous, but <laughs> no. So I knew I had that coming up and that was a major stress in my life. I was panicking over it, I was losing sleep over it. I have given myself IBS over it, which I don't thank myself for. The block I was coming into was a little bit more structured than others and the pandemic sort of hit at the right time. It's gonna sound really bad, but it meant that when we did come back to the blocks which, more to, which were more traditionally unstructured, we had that timetable there. Having that lack of timetable, although it's stressful, it has kind of taught me a big life lesson of finding my own way about doing things and not relying so much on what people tell me to do. I saw, We sort of had made an unspoken agreement with my clinical partner that we make sure we have a plan of what we're doing the next day before we go to sleep each night. So whether that's decided before we go home for the evening or messaging on Facebook during the night, as in like when we're working, not like at three o'clock in the morning. And that's helped really significantly. That's helped me cope with essentially what is a very loose and <laughs> vague term of the word timetable. Although the structure isn't there, I've sort of learned to embrace it and figure out how to put the structure when there is no structure. <sighs> we're getting there. And finally, the fear of the unknown. Again, that's timetables, but it felt like I got to December and I had this massive cliff face where it just dropped. I knew, I didn't know the environment I was going into, I didn't know how to handle hospitals, I didn't know what was going on during the pandemic, which I don't think anyone did, but that affected me. It was just knowing that I can get through things, I've just got to take it step by step. It's okay not to know everything when you go into a situation. But asking others and asking the members of staff isn't bad. I had this huge thing where I couldn't I didn't think I could ask questions because I thought people would get really annoyed at me. But it's been the complete opposite. I've never been told to go away from asking a question and I wish that I learnt that a bit earlier on. But I've learnt it now and I feel that that's what the medical degree is there to do, is to make sure you learn those lessons before you're an F1 and have actual sort of responsibility on your shoulders. So <laughs> it's it's been a hard year and that's without the pandemic there. I don't think I'd change a single moment of it. Whether it's been tough or whether I've enjoyed it, it's taught me something about how to handle things in the future. and. I'm glad that I can look at second year in the rear view mirror now and that mum third year and my final phase of medical school which is great and I love it but I'm glad it happened and I don't think I'll forget what I took away from it. So that's how Aspie played a part and he's still very much with me and will be with me for the rest of my life but I am slowly learning how to control him and how to manage him in a clinical environment. I wouldn't give up or change this degree for the world. I love what I do and I can't wait to be an actual doctor one day. So thank you very much for watching the video. I hope it's helped people out there who are going through similar things. Again, if you wanna comment below, if you wanna have any videos or covered about how to handle things in a clinical environment or what to do, any simple question, I will try my best to film a video to answer it. Um, thank you very much. Remember to follow me on my social medias that I will somehow get onto the screen. And see you in the next vlog. Bye!